Hey folks, what's going on today? We're back in Cables GL. We're having a great time exploring this platform. Highly recommend folks check it out, especially we've had a lot of folks reach out from the educational side of things where maybe in schools, whether it's elementary school, getting young kids involved or in high school, places where they might not have a kind of budget for licensing or special hardware. Cables GL seems like it might be a great fit for you guys. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna build uh, another really fun interactive project and it's going to really show us a couple of new fundamental operators that are really going to be useful in your day-to-day -day workflow uh, and what we're doing as you can see here is making an audio reactive circle on the screen now you can be as artistic as you want with the output we just kept it really simple with a transform and a circle but let's go ahead and close this tab and i've got a new prior i got a new project in the background and we're going to roll with this so like we did in our last example, we're going to go ahead and start off our project with a main loop here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to the project. And then what I want to do is gain access to my microphone input. Now this is really easy to do because I can just start typing microphone and I'm going to see a microphone in in the ops.web audio family of operators here. I can go ahead and add that to this patch. Now, just like we've been doing before, I'm gonna grab the main loops trigger here so that it continues every frame to update my microphone, plug it into the top input of my microphone in, and then in the parameters of my microphone in here, I'm gonna come down to this input, audio input, and I can select which microphone I want. So in this case, I'm gonna use my laptop's built-in microphone because all the other microphones are being used for all kinds of things. Now, if you haven't worked with microphones inside of your browser before, usually what'll happen the first time you do that is it's gonna have probably some kind of pop-up in this top left area near the navigation bar. And it's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna allow access for the microphone? You can go ahead and hit allow. Now, especially if you're in something like Chrome in this case, which I'm using, or if you're in Brave or Firefox, usually what'll happen is even though cables can see all of your devices, the browser itself might be limiting which microphone is connected to your system and, and available to use inside of the browser. So a lot of the times, for example, if I click on this little padlock, I'm gonna see all these different permissions here. But what I can also see is in the top right of my nav bar, a little kind of media video icon here. And if I click this, I can see which microphone Chrome is essentially giving over to cables here. Now, if I wanted to manage this and change this, the nice thing here is I can hit manage, go into the settings and select which microphone has access uh, to be used inside of cables or other websites. So we're not gonna dive too much deeper into permissions. There's lots of materials online for how to deal with microphone and camera permissions in a browser, but that should at least get you up and running. So now that I have my microphone in here, one operator we're gonna use a lot today, which is actually really similar to one of my favorite operators in Touch Designer, is called the Viz Op. And this Viz graph here is really great because what it allows us to do is exactly like the trail chop from Touch Designer is plug in a bunch of kind of moving data values and automatically have them charted so that we can either see their minimax value ranges or just compare them against each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a viz graph here and I can already come and start seeing different kinds of information. Now, the one thing I forgot is that my microphone in only really gives me audio output as an object and whether it's listening, true or false and an array that just shows me a list of the devices. So I actually need one more operator to start analyzing my audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and the great thing I found about cables, especially in just the few hours that I've been playing with it is even just typing what I want into the search is usually going to get me some kind of similar operator, whether it's from the description or in the name. And in this case, I can already see there's two that came up when I typed in analyze. One is an analyze texture, which is cool because it creates a spectrogram directly from the output of that microphone in. Actually, so not from the microphone in, from the audio analyzer, which is what we're going to make now. And the audio analyzer nice thing is it takes audio input and gives us all different kinds of audio analysis data points. So I'm gonna grab this audio analyzer here, drop this into the project. And what I wanna do is take the object audio output here from my microphone and plug that into the corresponding color input, which is the second one on my audio analyzer. 
Now in this case, one of the things I've been learning about cables is that there's a node called the sequence node. And especially in cases like this where our main loop is sending its trigger to our microphone in, we could take this main loop's trigger and also plug it into the audio analyzer. To be honest, I don't know if that's best practice or not, but from all of the examples I've seen, what's more common is to be a little bit more deliberate about the order of execution of these triggers. So in this case, I'm going to right click on those wires to disconnect them. And I'm going to add something called a sequence operator here. Now the sequence operator is great. You can just see tons of trigger inputs, tons of trigger outputs. And the way this generally works is essentially we give it our main loop trigger input. And then starting from left to right, we essentially have a cascade of triggers that come out of this sequence. Now you're probably going to see this in a lot of the examples that you look at, whether it's from the official documentation or other users, because this kind of technique ends up allowing us to be more kind of direct and implicit about the order of operations. So what I can do is in my head, I know that I want my microphone to update first, and then I want my audio analyzer to update. So I could grab the leftmost output here, connect it to my microphone input, and then really I could grab any of the subsequent right side outputs. I can even grab the last one in this case because it'll look prettier. Connect that to my audio analyzer. And now I know that my main loop is triggering my sequence. And then my tree sequence is first going to trigger the microphone input to update. And then it's going to trigger the audio analyzer to update. Now we're going to be looking more about the structure of patches as we kind of dive deeper into this. But it's good to know that this is a nice way to manage triggers, especially if something like the microphone input doesn't itself have a trigger output to kind of tell the next stage of execution what to do. So we've got our main loop, our sequence, it's triggering a microphone input, that input's being analyzed, and already across the bottom we can see a lot of really good information here. So we can see things like first a trigger output, passing the audio through here, we can get the raw FFT, we can get a waveform array, all kinds of frequencies by index, but really some of the things that we're going to want are the average volume and maybe the average volume by time domain or the RS RMS volume. So in this case, the nice thing is I can come right over to this average volume, grab this oh, and plug that into my viz graph here. And now we can see every time I snap my fingers, we'll see this viz graph go from a low value to a high value. And I really like this viz graph because you can see we can resize it and we can see our minimums and maximums right in this bottom area, which is going to be really great for our next operator that we're going to use here. Because if we want to take this analyzed value, connect it to some kind of content, connect it to anything really, we're probably going to want to rescale that value range. And folks coming from Touch Designer are going to be very familiar with my love for the math chop. And in this case, what we're going to use is a map range operator. And the map range operator basically does exactly as its name suggests. We got an incoming range, we can define that value range, and it's going to rescale it to our output value range. So in this case, I could take that same average volume, plug it into the first input here, which is the number value. Now, if you wanted to make this dynamic, there are four other inputs at the top here for dynamically updating your minimum maximum values for the incoming and outcoming value. But in this case, we're going to be pretty static because we can see from our viz graph, even after all of this time running, our microphones minimum is a value of 0 0.9 and a maximum of 1.99. So I can go ahead and even in the parameters of the map range, say my old value is 0 0.9 and my old max is 2. And then I like to make a new value range that is essentially normalized from zero to one. This makes it really easy to use with just about anything. And I can go ahead and adjust that further if I need to. Now this is where I'm going to make another viz graph just because I love the viz graph. Just so I can see what does this look like now that we are rearranged. And I can take a look here snap a couple times and we can see now we are hovering between 0.4 and 0.99. So that's great. But in any kind of audio analysis situation, most folks know that the raw audio is probably going to be too noisy. 
So I'm essentially going to want to smooth this out a little bit. You know, if you're coming from touch designer background, something like a filter chop or a leg chop, just to give my envelope a little bit of smoothness. Luckily inside of cables, we have an operator called smooth. And this is great because it allows us to take an input value and just apply a general amount of smoothing. So in this case, our smooth does have a trigger input for updating. So I can grab the output of my audio analyzer there, plug that in, grab the output of my map range, and I can even just start looking through the different inputs and see, you know what, it's not the decreasing factor, it's not the increase and decrease factor, which is, if you're familiar with the lag, chop, and touch designer, it lets you apply smoothing both as the value is rising and differently as the value is descending. So in this case, I'm going to plug this into my value here. And I can even go ahead, and the nice thing with this viz graph is I can also plug in the result of the smooth right back into the second input here and watch these two values be compared. So I can already see that smoothness is great. Now something I always do when I'm working with audio, especially when I'm creating these times, uh, these kinds of envelopes, is I like to have a different amount of upwards kind of smoothing versus downward smoothing. And this gives us the ability to have really sharp attacks going upwards with little smoothing, but then have a really nice kind of fade away and fall off with a bit longer of a smoothing. And I find you could set it to be a middle nut value that works in both cases, but it's so much better when you're able to separate it, have sharp attacks and really nice long fade offs. So what I can see here is I have these kind of just really smoothed out values. And what I'm gonna do is go back to my smooth operator, separate my increment and decrement here. And in this case, one thing to be careful of is it's a little bit backwards in terms of what you expect. So instead of setting the increment to zero and the decrement to something like five or six, we actually are gonna set the increment to something like five and the decrement to a value of zero. Now what we're gonna see, even just by looking at this, and if you ever get in this situation where at some point there was a high spike in the value, so it's kind of thrown off the auto ranging of the viz graph, you can click on the viz graph and in the inputs is a nice little reset button. So now we can see compared to our original values here, which are the blue ones, which have a little bit of noise and stepping. Now we have these yellow values, which are very sharp attacks with very nice roll offs on the end of them. So from here, we're essentially ready to take this value and use it to draw something. So what we can do in our previous example, we just made a really simple circle, drew it on screen and dynamically changed the transform of it. So I know I'm gonna need some kind of circle. Go ahead and search for that and I can see an op GL meshes that draws a circle, that's great. And I know I wanna play with the transform of this circle, so perfect, I can make a transform. And in this case, again, I'm gonna grab the trigger from the smooth, connect it to the transform, and then grab that transform and connect it to the circle. Now in this case, I already have this circle on screen here now. And what I can do is grab the value coming out of the smooth and I can just start looking through the different inputs of my transform here and I can see position XYZ, scale, that's what we're going to use, but you can also see rotation XYZ here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that into scale. And now we're already going to see that we have this audio reactive circle. Now, if you're going to take away a couple of things from this, you know, don't worry too much about the circle itself. That's just a quick example. But it's this idea that the sequence operator allows us to kind of distribute the timing and order of operation ourselves manually from left to right. We've got a microphone in node, which is a really great way to just grab live audio. We have our audio analyzer, which quickly takes in that microphone input and gives us all different kinds of outputs of analysis. We have a nice viz graph, which essentially lets us watch signals in real time, very similar to something like a trail chop from Touch Designer. We've got a map range node, which lets us rearrange quickly the values that are coming into it and give it a new value range on the output. And we've got this smooth operator, which really, <laughs> really feels like a filter chop or a lag chop from Touch Designer allows you to apply a variable amount of smoothing to that signal, whether the value is raising or being lowered. 
So with that said, hopefully this helps you get into some live audio analysis inside of cables. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.